Hello, my name is Dr. Peter Harrop. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm going to talk about something totally new. I'm going to talk about the world's first conference on that something, which is energy independent electric vehicles. I'll explain what we mean by that. I'll tell you a bit more about what we're trying to achieve with the conference and why it is where it is. So you see in the picture um, a few of the things that we're going to cover. It is indeed land, water and air. And it's uh, electric vehicles that never plug in, they never even inductively charge, they never need electricity from outside, they make their own electricity. They can do it depending on whether they're on the water or in the air or wherever from many different forms of ambient energy. Uh, such as wind, waves, tide, thermals, and um, sunshine, but not necessarily sunshine, even daylight's enough, and it can be infrared as well. So there are a lot of options. And that is why this is a very important um, subject now. Why now? Well, um, energy independent electric vehicles have just moved. Um, in the last few years from the hobbyist to the major sales um, category, um, or at least major investment uh, moving up to billions of dollars. Um, and um, the involvement of substantial companies, serious companies taking orders and satisfying them, not doing prototypes, such as a company in the Netherlands called Naval DC, which is a speaker at the event. Uh, the world's largest companies have taken an interest as well, which is another indication of a tipping point. Um, it is very significant that the keynote speaker is Toyota, talking about its progress towards energy independent electric vehicles. And in the different talks, uh, we will cover activities that are in the area by Tesla, Google, Facebook, Boeing, Airbus, and other giants. So this is certainly an idea whose time has come, and um, some of these vehicles are actually more than energy independent. They even produce excess electricity, which they use for equipment on board to perform their task, or in some cases, actually on land, donate it back into the, uh, in, into the AC grid of the country, uh, and actually, earn money. So this sounds like magic, but bear with me, it is not magic. Um, the scope, land, water and air, as I say, key enabling technologies we will cover at the event, uh, and um, technology benefits to existing vehicles, because it's a bit like uh, Formula One. Formula One racing isn't in future going to be giving us um, significant things that appear in a car or a motorcycle near us but it certainly has in the past. It's given us kinetic energy recovery systems, the flywheels for capturing back power when they break. It's given us the disc brake um, and uh, carbon bodywork. Uh, not, not those people invented these things, but, but, but they were the first to really use them in earnest. And then they were proven and they cascaded down in spin-off companies and so on to a car near you. That's going to happen now with things like the solar racers, which are energy independent vehicles uh, on water, on land, and so on. And um, they are already spinning off many companies. Not least, this is happening at the Technical University of Delft. Technical University of Delft is in the Netherlands, and it is where we've chosen to have the conference because they have the most. Um, energy independent vehicles, land and water, from solar racers to energy, to energy positive tethered drones for the next generation of wind power, um, world records and um, uh, solar boats and research on many of the enabling technologies such as photovoltaics, dielectric lasting generators and other things. Uh, why ID TechX? My company is ID TechX. We are analysts. We uh, have about 15 people with PhD level qualifications, many of them multilingual spread across the world, about 50 of us in all. We're growing quite rapidly. 
we're totally independent, we can give a totally independent view and we do that in databases, reports, consultancy and events, of which this is one. This is a starter event on a totally new subject. We have quite large events uh, which take place every year in Berlin and in Santa Clara in California. We try to be thought leaders and the subjects we have deliberately overlap. So ahead of you, you see um, all these things, electric vehicles, uh, they do actually now use wearable technology, the Internet of Things, energy storage, energy harvesting, emerging device technology, RFID, robotics, of course, and all those other things. So um, not sure about the biotechnology, but I guess we'll be growing some sometime soon. But uh, that's us, you see on the right about us, you can read that at your leisure, get hold of these slides. Uh, and here is the promotion for our event, the first um, uh, piece of promotion for it. Uh, there is a, a discount for booking early, and it's describing the sort of world that uh, these vehicles are in. Uh, there's a picture there of an inflatable solar plane that's uh, best if you inflate it with helium, it can lift 35 tonnes and beat the truck going across the land across Canada just on Canadian sunshine because it goes in a straight line and drop the load, uh, lower it down exactly at destination which a truck can't do. And um, obviously great advantages, below it is a, an autonomous solar boat that's going to cross the Atlantic which uh, not solar, it's wind, that's wind only because this is not all about solar. We're back with solar in the middle, there's um, <clears throat> several drones you'll see which are vertically lifting propeller drones, there's one there with four propellers and it's just a solar cell, it's just a, an array and um, when the sun comes out it can take off, it's just a, a fun demonstration of the power of the sun, uh, below there are serious cars coming out within three years and on the right uh, upper atmosphere aircraft and um, air, airships that are uh, solar alone and stay up for up to 10 years or that is the intention so it's a tremendous area of um, scope great deal of virtuosity involves startups right up to very large companies and some fairly prophetic things are being said by uh, different of these companies I won't read out all that text there it gives you a bit of a fill in on what I have described Obviously, multiple energy harvesting is the clever thing to do. Uh, in one sense, this is taking the technology of an ocean uh, GmbH of Munich in Germany, which does building controls for the wireless and never ever have a battery, um, and have mul because they have multiple energy harvesting, thermoelectrics, photovoltaics, electrical dynamics, uh, and um, that is, if you like, um, a next generation form of controls, but you can read that onto electrical engineering, you can read that onto vehicles. And yes, some of them don't even need a battery, most of them need a battery, but they are certainly um, not needing to plug in. And um, it's pretty significant that Toyota recently has um, been showing the Prius Prime, uh, it's a beginning, it's not a, an energy independent vehicle, but it's um, a vehicle only range, it could be independent for five kilometers a day, um, uh, but the more important point is that they're on the journey, that's why Toyota's a keynote speaker, and that's why the, the Prius uh, plug-in hybrid chief engineer recently said, my ideal car, a car that can charge from the sun. This is the world we're talking about, it's just got serious and I think you must get involved in this and understand this totally different end game, which gives you a totally different journey in improving vehicles, land, water and air today. We're headed in a rather different direction and I'll air that a bit more. So for example, Toyota has just uh, patented uh, mini wind turbines that when the vehicle is parked can uh, generate electricity and um, this system it says could generate energy to power into the land auxiliary systems such as air conditioning all part of the 
or, or part of the issue. Look at this one here. This is an example of that sort of thing actually in action today. In Italy, this is a very advanced uh, type of wind turbine with no shaft in the middle, so you don't have that inefficiency. It's a rotating ring. Indeed, it's four of them. It swings into the wind when the thing is parked. Do you know that um, pasta restaurant van, when it is parked, it, it can not only go all over Italy, even in the night, because it does have a battery that the solar power charges, and it's only solar power, go anywhere in Italy. But when it's parked, when it opens up the flaps on the sides to that solar to face the sun, it, it can uh, cook over 100 um, bowls of pasta using two induction plates and a microwave oven and not use the battery. So these are areas where, whether it's Toyota, whether it's this company, IFEVS in Italy or others, this is the future and that's what we're talking about. This is another example. I'm not going to read the detail. You get that if you get the slides. Uh, but the shape is deliberate. That sort of catamaran shape is an aerodynamic that was deliberately designed. And for some time now, that Stella Lux car has not only won prizes crossing Australia, it has so much solar, it doesn't even bother with a wind turbine. It has so much solar that it gen donates um, uh, electricity to the grid at the end of the day after doing the commute for four people, not one people, it's a four-person car. In sunshine, it's got what they call a perpetual speed. That's rather nice, isn't it? Um, new parameter. What is the perpetual speed of your vehicle? And it's that almost at 72 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's only perpetual in that case during daylight, not necessarily sun, but daylight. Uh, but we're entering a new world. What is your perpetual speed? In uh, Germany, there's been some criticism of Sono Motors with their announcement of their Scion solar car because they've raised relatively modest money. Uh, they've designed a solar car that, as you see, has solar right across the doors. Yes, single crystal solution is pretty good at about 60 degrees angle. It is not stupid to put the solar on the door. Later, the windows will also be solar, no doubt. There's technologies for that. We have reports on smart windows that talk about that. Uh, but in the meantime, yes, they are very ambitious. They say they're going to bring out in next year, in 2018, um, these for general sale, and they will have um, a perpetual speed in sunshine, and they will have a range limited only by when the sun is out or daylight is there. And they say a very competitive um, price of only about 16,000 euros. Um, that would probably come out, I think, as what the Europeans register homologated, not as a crash-tested car, because that would cost a fortune, uh, but as a quadricycle. Um, there are categories for lightweight vehicles that look like cars, but are not registered as cars. It's all feasible. Um, yes, they may be delayed, of course they may, but what they've done is very shrewd and very sensible and there is a route to making that far more uh, effective in the years to come with many other technologies such as regeneration where you have energy harvesting shock absorbers and uh, suspension and uh, possibly triboelectric tires and all that uh, and also new forms of energy harvesting may be that uh, wind turbine erecting when it's parked and so on. There's a whole goodie bag of things that can be added to those sorts of technologies. There's a whole technology roadmap and that's what we're going to reveal at this event uh, that shows where these things are headed. So let's look at something else. This seems odd. It's not an energy independent vehicle. Yes, a vehicle so disabled. Look at them at the bottom. Uh, rather gawky things have been done uh, that are totally energy independent and take someone who's disabled or just overweight or pregnant or whatever to where they want to go. They do exist. But the one I want to talk about is significant because it's a much better design and although it's not yet energy independent, it can go um, as, as fast as someone walking very fast and it's a safer product, it has many other benefits. It's been designed, and the significance is twofold. 
It's been designed by people who were working on the new on solar world record breaking uh, solar races from the Technical University of Delft. So it's an example of how the solar races are the new Formula One spinning off other technologies. Uh, and it is, as I said, uh, significant because there is clearly a route to making it totally energy independent. Uh, they see at the bottom some aspects of um, uh, vehicles for disabled being suboptimal in the Netherlands, and that explains what they're about. So, the world of spin offs of useful technologies from energy independent and vehicle world is, is with us, is with us now. This is an example of one of the more ambitious and very significant moves. In the last year, Hanergy of China, which has had its own problems um, financially and so on, but sweep that aside for the moment. We're talking about strategy and common sense and um, seeing the future. Hanergy of China said, right, we'll take what is normally satellite technology, gallium arsenide, very thin film solar cells, call it one kilowatt per kilogram, and we'll do it in an intelligent way so that when the car passes, so the cells may come right down the front of the road and right down the back to the road, or it'll open like a petal. Uh, but one way or the other, we'll get up to four times, five times the area. And by using gallium arsenide, we'll have a root map which will take us right through to 42% efficiency in 2025, and we'll get three times the electricity. And so you'll get a huge increase, and this will be well over a kilowatt, maybe two kilowatt level. And they even put that type of solar. Yes, they've demonstrated. Yes, they've shown SUVs, sports cars, and family cars working last year. This is real. And um, they will even have solar, they say, on the dashboard inside to work the internal electrics because the solar is so efficient. Uh, you have to believe that energy independent vehicles are things you've got to get savvy about now because they're everywhere and they're going to be a significant business. Not necessarily tens of billions of dollars even in 10 years time, but the valuation of companies will be affected by whether they're working on them. You can be sure of that. And certainly in 20 years time, it's quite likely to be a huge business. So let's go to see. Uh, Naval DC is already selling or sold these vehicles. They're not dreams and they're not prototypes. They've sold several. And the top one carries a large number of people purely on the solar power. And as you see, it gets moving quite rapidly. And the bottom one is a set that have gone to the Polynesian Islands, which do have sails, but they also have solar, which lets them go rapidly when there is no wind. Uh, and they are set up to be energy independent vehicles without plugging in at any time. They do also do variants that are hybrid and you can have a bridge across to the present day by doing hybrids and whatever you like and plug in versions, but this is a sign of the times. These things are up and trading. You need to know about what is happening. The world is moving forward faster than most people realize. I'd like to bring you to another speaker at the event now, Professor Babud Kushnad of the University of California started his research at Brunel University in uh, England and um, he works on uh, solar aerial vehicles including top right one that mimics a fly um, and um, other ones that are solar inflated vehicles uh, below some with um, propeller assistance for vert controlled vertical takeoff and um, he's doing a whole range of very um, advanced and ambitious uh, projects. So he's not putting things in production at this time. He's showing us where we're headed a bit further forward from now. And we have the privilege of hearing what he and his researchers are up to. Uh, another one that is neither long term research nor is it. Uh, um, something currently on sale is Facebook, no less, who want to be in the internet, and then two and a half billion people who haven't got it. I think I'd add that the rest of us who think we've got it don't have it very well, and we'd like that improved too. So one way or another, the name of the game is you put up um, something that's wider than a, a large jet plane, 
and um, is like a flimsy as a butterfly, but it's autonomous and it stays up. The intention is it will stay up uh, initially for 90 days at a time and later for five years at a time, purely on sunshine, energy positive, because to beam the internet you need the communications equipment. And the Chinese also uh, have got these types of things. They've just flown one that stayed up for several weeks, so that might be ahead of uh, the Americans in the endurance. And they see it being used for such rescue functions, communications functions, military surveillance functions. And so it's the Americans and the Chinese particularly active in this. And we're going to talk about those types of projects and what the significance is of those. Um, at the edge of the subject actually is Google. Google bought a company, McCarney, it's put several hundred million dollars into it. And this is um, a tethered drone and um, it, it's been on Facebook uh, on YouTube just recently, uh, one of the first flights. Uh, the idea is that you pump enormous amounts of electricity um, into a conductive tether uh, going to it to power it so it takes off with its eight propellers, huge propellers. It goes to where the wind is much more consistent and uh, four times stronger, just above traditional wind turbines. And then it becomes not a kite, but it flies in a circle um, with those huge propellers um, changing their function to being wind turbines. So it's designed, the initial one, 600 kilowatts. They intend to make them several megawatts. Look at the picture. The picture is saying we dream of them being on ships. Not that impulsive character ship, but in this case, perhaps they drive a chemical factory on the ship. They also dream, surprise, surprise, of driving Google servers uh, that are full of to serve their functions um, as the Google devices. So we have a report on airborne wind energy. If you're interested in that aspect, this is heroically energy positive electric vehicles, if you like, um, on the edge of the subject, I suppose, in a sense, because they're tethered. But it shows how the giants are interested. It is an idea whose time has come. Indeed, if you look at one of the lecturers, which is Kite Mill of Norway, they have one of these tethered drones. Look on the top right. It can take off when there's no wind at all. It can go right through the still air, way above traditional wind turbines. Indeed, this can go typically to a thousand meters, where the end it, wind is really strong and really consistent, and then it, it acts as a kite. You don't use the lifters anymore, you, you use it as a kite, and you have not electricity going down the cable, but you pull on a, um, a generator down below. Now, I've drawn it in a way they're not doing at this time, but uh, if you did do that, now you generate it on, say, one of these expanding solar containers, that would give you 10 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts, and the kite actually, the initial ones are 30 kilowatts, and they're then going to be 100 kilowatts and megawatt level. Uh, but even if you had relatively small ones, you've now got something that is a transportable uh, sunshine and wind device, so it would need little battery, if any, and it could be used for advancing armies, it could be used for uh, working power tools at destinations, it could be a bus that is energy positive and multi-purpose, helping the communities it visits. It could be uh, something that drives the robots that you have in fields in the agriculture of the future. We have a report on that. You know there are robots that beat weeds to death and you don't need any of the herbicide, fungicide and all the rest. Um, there are all sorts of very advanced things, but they do need power and so a, a transportable power, but that actually reads onto this huge world of diesel gen sets. Diesel gen sets um, tend to be flammable. The cost of getting the fuel to remote places is very high. They can be dangerous. Uh, the emissions are very bad and um, they need to be replaced. Well, it's something like 600 kilowatts. It is a huge amount of these things. And what you're looking at here is one possible solution for doing that in a totally green way and somewhat um, into the world of energy positive.
energy independent electric vehicles. So we're going to cover that. We have three people talking about these types of um, drones that generate electricity or kites that generate electricity. It's sort of part of the subject, but we have the mainstream very much as well. So we're talking about the enabling technologies. The enabling technologies include extreme light weighting. That means um, making two boxes of power electronics uh, be replaced by one by using some common components for different tasks. Multi-mode charging systems or double as mode controllers in part and so on. And um, the extreme light weighting from structural electronics where the body of the vehicle, land, water or air, is smart. It's not, not just dumb metal or plastic anymore. It doubles as uh, solar cells and um, logic and all power logic and all sorts of things. Um, so a very general view of that. So we um, are doing uh, new energy harvesting and regeneration technologies. I've touched on a bit of that. New energy storage we're touching on. And um, an example of uh, energy harvesting that's really uh, prophetic and really advanced is um, we're flying from the UK, Professor Elias Suarez of the University of Bolton, who's going to talk about uh, fibres that are piezoelectric and photovoltaic, and therefore could harness in principle sun, rain and wind in the fabric of airships and sails and things like that. So we're really pushing the envelope here in the event with things that will really make you think. And it's not just the event itself, it's a two-day event, and it has lectures throughout the two days. Uh, but the day before and the day after, we have master classes, and these are optional, and they last two and a half hours each, three on the day before, three on the day after, and they cover a lot of these things. For instance, one of them is on extreme light weighting. An example of that, a company that will be lecturing in the conference and helping with the um, some of the master classes is uh, in, for the master class on structural electronics. Um, is Tech of Finland. Yes, we're bringing in people from all over the world. And their way of making shaped plastic that um, can be part of the bodywork of a vehicle so that effectively the components vanish and you increase reliability considerably, ruggedness is improved considerably, the weight is reduced considerably, and the space taken is reduced to almost nothing. Uh, this very exciting company will be there. So that's a taster. I could have talked about 30 other activities. Look at the website. I hope you found it useful. Uh, here are the certain reasons why I think that you should come. Uh, you need to understand the timescales of all this, the global scope of all this, which countries are doing what, which companies are doing what, the show so far, where are we at, benefits to society. Uh, you can imagine on remote islands now you might have an electric vehicle that you pass down to your grandchildren uh, that costs almost nothing, effectively nothing to run and almost never needs repair. Benefits to society involve many other things, obviously saving the planet, local emissions and so on. But it's quite significant if you're going to bypass the electric utilities, you won't have any conversation anymore about can they can. They're not even in the circuit uh, and uh, you will not be discussing charging stations needed and so on. So there's a big effect on the value chain and there'll be billion dollar activities created from what is needed. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk a bit about the people, um, you can meet the people who are investing and making history in this way, uh, the market drivers, impediments, opportunities, and how billion dollar activities will be created uh, and empowering, as I said, remote communities, but also the third world. This has huge impact for the third world, in fact, it has impact for the whole of the world, but we're not going to exaggerate, we're not going to say this is all happening overnight, but we will tell you from the people doing it, um, the dramatic things that are happening very soon. That brings me to the end. I hope it was useful. Um, we try and support your strategic business decisions on emerging technologies with, as I say, consultancy and databases, publications, events. You can contact us at these five locations and I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and goodbye.